Welcome back this morning. We've got this Home Light 5700 portable generator. It's got the Yamaha MZ300 on it. We went to check the oil and basically what happened at that point is that the oil mixed with the fuel started draining out all over the place. So this was when we first went to look at the unit. Just completely full. So you got to be careful when you drain these. You obviously don't want to, you know, get that gas anywhere that can create a spark and cause you a fire. But it's a very common issue that you get gas mixed in with the oil. Happens all the time. We see it multiple times every single week. So uh, basically what you want to do is you want to go ahead and drain all that out of there to start off with. And then anytime we get anything that drains into the crankcase, we don't even bother trying to clean the carburetor. Now, let me tell you why. On these, the carburetor is what? 20 to $40. You know, I'm not sure exactly what the cost is, but they're, they're fairly cheap. This design does come two different ways. Sometimes it comes with a solenoid on the bottom with two wires that come up and hook over to the side. This one does not have a solenoid on the bottom of the carburetor. But we're gonna go ahead and replace this carb. I'm gonna show you how to clean this crankcase out, flush it out, get everything ready to go. So when you get this carburetor replaced, you'll have a good running unit. First off, we're gonna go ahead and just take the air cleaner cover off here. Nice and easy on this, just a Phillips head screws on the front, a couple of them. Now you can go with an OEM carb on this, but again, uh, I've said this many times, honestly, I feel like it's a waste of money going with OEM stuff like that anymore. It's almost all the same quality, whether it's Yamaha or anybody else. You're not going to get a big difference. So, go ahead and just take the two bolts out of the front. Air cleaner cover comes straight out. And then you've got your deflector. That's basically just there to keep your foam from pulling through when it disintegrates. It will disintegrate at some point. Looks like we've got, I believe, a 12 millimeter then on the front. Normally so on these. We're going to take that out as soon as I can find something to take it out with. All right. Always got the right tools you need until you don't. The two there and then it looks like there's a 10 millimeter at the bottom that's going to hold the front of that face on. So I've just kind of let that drain out to the bottom. If you get something uh, nice and low, you can get it up underneath to catch as much as you can. I'm not really worried about the residual over there. A little adapter comes off the front, you can pull it off, and then the whole assembly just comes towards you. Now there is a vent for the valve cover right there that goes into the air cleaner. You can pull that straight out also. It just pushes straight back in when we go to put it back on. Now from there we can take the fuel line off and we'll go ahead and drain that fuel out of there. Now anytime you have an issue like this, no matter whether you just replaced the fuel or not, unless you completely drained it, you're going to want to drain that again. Now you can put it in like your car or something like that. Normally not going to hurt it unless there's a bunch of water in it, which you can see once you drain it, you know, if, if that's the case. But normally not going to hurt something like that, but for anything carbureted, it's a horrible idea to use any fuel that's been left in it. You always want to replace it, especially if you don't know the origin of it. So again, I've just got that down into the bucket. We're just going to let that tank start to drain. Now I did look down in the top to see what kind of fuel it was. It didn't look too bad, but it had a little bit of an orangish or yellowish color to it. So... From there with the carburetor, you can just pull that thing. A lot of times if you get the gasket off, it'll make it a little bit easier. But to break the seal, you can just tap lightly on the carburetor. I just hit on the backside a little bit and it comes straight off. So the adapter on this one's coming off with it for some reason. Normally that doesn't happen. Normally they break at a different spot, but the whole adapter came off in this case. No big deal. That adapter will come straight down. 
All right. I'm gonna put it just back on there the way it came off, just so we know which way it went. And then your carburetor, you can pull that spring up and out, and then it just comes just like that. So your carburetor is completely free at that point. So nice and easy to get that carburetor off. You can see just all the gum up in there, just a bunch of a bunch of nasty stuff. For the heck of it, we'll go ahead and pull the bowl. See what it looks like inside. Yeah, so it's it's pretty nasty down in there. You can see some of that rubber and stuff, along with buildup of varnish or ethanol. Definitely not good. You don't want to reuse this carburetor. You can clean it and try to get it back going, but the problem is nine times out of ten, the rubber on that needle is actually going to be so bad that you're not going to be able to get it to come back. You'll get it all cleaned up. You'll spend that half an hour or whatever, even longer probably on this one since it's in real bad shape, getting it all cleaned up and cleaned out. Now, if you're in a tight situation and you need to do that, that can be done. I'll show you how to do that here just real quick. Uh, essentially, you'll want to take the... Um, Take the pin here out. Now many times they're stuck in there and I like to use this and just kind of grab and pull. That way you're not gonna break that tab off. Just little by little and get that up out of there. You can break those tabs now pretty easily. They're not hard to do. But if you just pull little by little, that will come out. Once it gets out that part, you can grab it with the needle nose or anything else usually, but looks like that back part's still so kind of in there. I'm not really worried about being too gentle at this point because we're not going to reuse it. We've got a new carb. And you want to take your jet off the side. Get us a nice screwdriver to do that with. So you take your jet straight out the side. Now this is an important jet of the unit. If this jet is clogged, your unit will not run at all. So you want to make sure that's clean all the way down through. There's a jet that goes down through there. If that jet's not clean, your unit's not going to run either at all or it's going to run poor. So make sure it's clean through there and also on the back side. You can use carburetor cleaner. You can use pieces of a wire brush. Uh, just pull a wire loom or something like that out of them. That'll be real nice. And you just want to make sure there's nothing in there. The more you get out, the better it's going to run. You can also take the main jet down through out. Now when removing that, if you push in real hard as you're turning out, it'll help you not to strip that brass. This brass strips out very easily on these. So you want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, if you pick a screwdriver that's as wide as possible, uh, but also you don't want it too wide because otherwise it'll ruin the threads on the outside. So you want to make sure the jet's clean down through the middle and then you should be able to see through each one of these holes directly through all the way. These are all completely plugged up with varnish and gum. So it'd take forever to clean that if you were gonna clean it. And then you're not guaranteed that this needle here is gonna reseat. A lot of times that rubber at this point has gone. Looks like it has some stuff on it there. Yeah, it just feels really tacky as I'm touching it. If, if yours feels tacky, you're gonna wanna replace it instead of trying to rebuild it or anything like that. I mean, you can buy a rebuild kit for these carbs, but by the time you put the the time and effort into it is cheaper just to buy a new one, you know, and the aftermarket ones aren't going to be really any less quality than what your OEM stuff is. It's all made overseas. There's nothing, you know, this is a Manuki, uh, the new one. Let's see what we got. Yeah, so it looks like this one doesn't have a brand name on it. I believe we got it from, I'm honestly not really sure. We're going to go ahead and open it up anyway. Anytime we replace any carburetor, including the OEM carburetors, we open them up every time. You want to see what's inside. You want to be the quality control because many of them don't have quality control anymore. This one's a little different design. It's got a jet down through the middle. I don't see anything there. Just break this off. That guy didn't want to come off real good. I'm just trying to, I push that back up to try to keep that uh, bowl seal up in there. I don't want it to drop out. I don't see any kind of shavings or anything in this, but we'll blow it out here real good. I don't even think the air is on right at this second, so go ahead and just use a little bit of carb cleaner. 
get everything out real good now be aware if you're using carb cleaner on this a lot of times that gasket will swell if it's not pushed down in there so make sure it's pushed down in there before trying any of this we're just trying to make sure that this is going to be a good carburetor you know even though it's aftermarket as long as it's quality controlled you're sure there's nothing in it they will last pretty well so again this gasket down at the bottom the o-ring will swell up sometimes we'll get it back together real quick and we'll be good to go we're just going to tighten that back up and then we're going to go ahead and replace the intake gaskets before we put this carburetor back together the drain always goes 180 from the inlet no matter what I want to make sure all this all this works all this matches especially if you've got an aftermarket you know if you're looking at it and something's completely different you know if, if the uh, linkages hook up in different spots or they're different shapes or sizes it's probably not going to work right for your unit you probably got the wrong one this one looks a little bent i think it did that when i set it down or something but the intake gaskets are very important here if there's any kind of air leak from back here you will not get a good running unit so it looks like it came off clean here the other one's hard on there hey you can spend a bunch of time going ahead and trying to scrape that off that's all fine and dandy if that's what you want to do but that gasket there's nothing wrong with it it hasn't been ruined whatsoever we're going to go ahead and replace it with a different one and all we're going to do oops, upside down all we're going to do is we're going to slide it right on there and up against the old one not going to hurt anything whatsoever now we've got the one on the front it's super easy to take off well normally is that didn't go quite as planned but you want to get that all scraped off of there and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put a new gasket on here also over the front now the gas is about done draining as far as the crankcase goes you want to get all that stuff out of the crankcase at this point before we go installing the carburetor any further i'm going to show you how to flush that tank out also while we're at it you want the tank completely clean because you don't know the quality of that fuel it could have some water or something like that in it the easiest way to drain the crankcase completely if you come over here you can go ahead and take the nut out the side or the bolt out of the side and you can get something underneath to catch anything that comes out so let's see what size we got. Oop, looks like that might be a 17 millimeter. It sure is. 17 millimeter on that. Now if you take it out there, that'll usually get you drained all the way to the bottom. Again, make sure you don't have anything flammable or anything like that around because this stuff it just once it goes up it likes to burn for a long time too it's not extremely extremely explosive or anything like that like a regular fuel but it's almost like a kerosene and once it lights that stuff is hard to get put out because it's got so much oil and mixed in with it I've I've lit a few things up over the years and this is one of the hardest ones to put out so uh, yeah, let that drain for a while let it all get out of there uh, what I like to do is go ahead and actually put the plug back in at some point after it drains pull it over just a couple times to get everything kind of mixed up a little bit and then drain it again so that that just kind of flushes it out a little bit now we will run them for about five minutes or so after we get everything done and then we'll change the oil again to make sure all that all that residual oil in there or residual gas in there mixed with the oil does get completely taken out of the unit so take a little bit of time get that completely flushed out you want to start fresh with just oil in your crankcase uh, if you don't do that it really ruins the longevity of your unit we'll be right back here after doing that so we're back here we got the whole crankcase all flushed out and everything uh, we did use a little bit of compressed air just to blow through the uh, oil fill on the other side and it kind of works everything towards the drain down here one easy way to do it if you have compressed air handy uh, again we go ahead and change it it looks like the fuel is almost done draining we go ahead and change the oil after about five minutes of running anyway 
so it's not a big deal whatsoever we've got this thing filled back up but to drain all the fuel we've got the back end propped up just a little bit off of the ground to make sure that all the fuel comes forward and drains out of the petcock here now down inside you want to make sure this is all clean i got right there i got a nice dead bug of some sort so that's cool uh, the inside just has all kinds of stuff down in it. I'm not sure what all that stuff is. It looks like grit. Uh, it's not really rusted or anything, but maybe a uh, gel. It looks like up there. A gel or a grit of some sort. So in order to flush that out, you can do one of two things. A lot of times we'll use carburetor cleaner. Just kind of spray it up through. Just to work that stuff down. And it also, what it does is it'll dry out real quick. And it'll dry out any moisture and stuff in there once you spray it with a little bit of compressed air on top of that so you just want to make sure no matter what by the end of this that tank's completely dry and there's nothing left on the inside of it so as we're sitting to the front we normally have a reservoir that kind of sits towards the front that doesn't go out of there and this one actually is pretty it's it's done a pretty good job of actually draining the whole tank so if you're having any issue with fuel flow or you're having an issue that you think it's clogged or that you're not getting all the fuel out of the top of the tank you can go ahead and take a 7 8 wrench and you can unscrew this assembly it just unscrews from there and you can clean that filter you can clean your whole uh elbow here for the shut off and everything out uh, in this case, I think we're going to be good just by blowing it out real good, uh, getting all that stuff out of the bottom of the tank. You can also, if you don't have carburetor cleaner, you can use uh, just some fuel down in there and keep flushing it down through. But do remember that if there's particles like that in there and you're not using compressed air to blow them out, those aren't going to come out of there. Those are going to stay in there. So you either want to use compressed air to blow all that stuff out of there and dry it out. That way the stuff comes out with it. Otherwise, you're going to want to remove the uh, shutoff here and you're going to want to let it drain from the bottom and spray up inside or put gas up in there to kind of flush everything out. Otherwise, you'll be right back in the same boat in no time. Sometimes it takes quite a few times of doing that. It didn't look like this one was horrible or anything down in there, but it looks like we've got the majority of it out at this point. But we're going to go ahead and do it just a couple more times just to make sure. And again, the, the carburetor cleaner just kind of dissipates any water. It'll dissipate any of that old gas in there and make it evaporate. But at the same time, it is kind of a nauseous thing. So using a well-ventilated area, obviously don't be uh, having any open sparks or flames near this. We'll let that dry out just for a bit. Let the carburetor cleaner dry out. Now, before you're gonna just replace all this stuff, you do wanna try to pull the unit over and make sure that it's not locked up or anything like that. Now, we did go ahead and pull the plug while we were on break here. It's got an E3, I can't stand these plugs. Um, everybody swears by them, but normally those people swearing by them are the people who are bringing them in saying, hey, I love my spark plug. It just won't run though after I replaced it. So uh, we're going to put a BPR 6 ES in there. Now turn over the unit without the plug in it. Make sure there's nothing in the cylinder itself. A lot of times if they're leaking, uh, depending on where the cylinder is, you'll actually get a bunch down in the cylinder hole. Um, if you're going to pull it over, you want to you wanna isolate your spark plug wire away from anything metal so it can't spark. You can also hook it up to something metal. That way it doesn't get a spark. There's no room in between them to create a spark. So you just don't want to spark over here against this while you're spraying out some fuel. Lights up real quick, trust me. <laughs> that's the, uh, I think that's the way we've started the most fires. Um, 
And we've had quite a few of them over the years, but normally they're real small. We got fire extinguishers everywhere. I'm well trained in what to do there, but go ahead and put this plug back in. Tighten it up and we pulled it over. I don't hear any kind of weird sounds. You know, if you're hearing clanking or clunking going on, any kind of weird noises coming from it, you probably got something else going on. Somebody probably tried to run it, you know, with that uh, fuel oil mix in it and actually got it started at some point and may have ruined something. So it really just depends on how much damage was done, what you need to do from here. This one uh, seemed like we're in a pretty good shape as far as the damage done. So we're gonna go ahead and take the fuel line off and we're gonna blow back through. So it's got a little tear in it there. Normally if you, if you twist and turn while you're taking it off and then pull, it doesn't tear, but sometimes they just get bad right where the inlet goes. So we're gonna cut back to there. I think we got plenty of room. And you wanna make sure that it's not cracked out anymore at that point. If there's any more cracks along it, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and replace this fuel line going up. So we're gonna have plenty of room anyway. Uh, no big deal whatsoever there. But we're gonna blow back through it, get everything out of the, get everything out of that filter blown back through to the backside, and we're gonna blow up top again. Again, running some good fuel through it to flush it out, that's not a bad way to do it either. You don't have compressed air or carb cleaner or anything like that. Up top, it looks extremely dry. Everything looks good there. Now we did go ahead and put this gasket on also. So the intake gasket has been put on at this point. Now we're gonna go ahead and put everything back together. So uh, the unit here, I like to throw the spring on and throw our linkage on there real quick and go ahead and put it back now we're getting quite a bit of play in that unit i can't believe how big those holes are to be quite honest with you um it looks like the other one's exactly the same there's a lot of play here in between the governor so in between the throttle plate and the governor linkage the spring keeps it tight against there so if this spring is bad on something like this you're going to get super surging out of it this is one of the times when that spring is extremely important. Most of them are a lot tighter tolerances than that. And that's why people claim this spring doesn't do anything. They claim it doesn't do anything because there's really no change with or without the spring a lot of times. But when you got that much play in there, that's gonna cause a lot of, a lot of surging if you don't have that tight against it. Now this one is exactly the same size. So even if you've got it in your old unit, which is the OEM carb, it's gonna have just as much play. I'm not sure exactly why they're designed like that, but just one thing to note, throw this fuel line back on. Now really any shorter and that wouldn't have been okay, but we're about right at that level where it's perfect. So not being stretched or anything like that, but all right. So, get our fuel clamp on there. <clears throat> now we'll go ahead and put the gasket on. Get your intake gasket. Now this gasket won't change the way that it runs, but it will change the way that, whether or not it pulls any of this dust or debris or anything like that in. You know, if you don't have that there, all this dust that's gotten accumulated, that much dust is gonna be pulled into the engine. It's trying to constantly pull that in there, so. You don't want that to happen unless you want premature engine wear, so. Which I've never had someone tell me they were happy about. <laughs> it's usually someone cussing their neighbor for uh, borrowing it and not returning it. So that the piece here just goes right back in the back. It plugs straight in for your uh, uh, vent cover. Or valve cover, I mean, I'm sorry. It's a crankcase vent, essentially. All right, plugs in on the back side. You get your adapter. Well, that didn't go all the way in there for some reason. It's wanting to be difficult. Not sure why. They usually go in there pretty easily. All right, your two on the front. As far as your nuts go, and then again, that's just a 12 millimeter hold it on. And then we got a 10 millimeter down at the bottom. Now that fuel in it didn't look great at all, so I'm glad we flushed it all out. If you're actually cleaning your carburetor, the only thing I missed as far as cleaning it, you know, you want to make sure all those jets and the seat and the needle and everything's good. 
there's also a top jet here so if you undo this and you use your torch tip cleaners or your piece of a wire brush or anything like that oh yeah see how clogged up that is there's just stuff everywhere so you want to make sure that there is a hole all the way through that and it's a real tiny hole so really like a piece of a wire brush works best but make sure that's unclogged otherwise even if you have everything else in the unit clean you will still get surging tighten everything up and Not sure why here we have a, looks like we have a, <clears throat> have a hose clamp right in the middle of the, of the line instead of up here at the coupler. I'm not sure. I would assume that was added at some point. It definitely doesn't look OEM, so. All right, go ahead and throw this back in, just how it should be here. Throw our cover, our cleaner, I'm sorry. Cleaner back in there. You can throw the cover back on. So uh, you do want to clean that air cleaner out real good if it's dirty. This one there was hardly anything in. We blew it out just just a tiny bit. Now you can go ahead and tighten both of those up. And again, I put about a quart of oil in it. I think is what it was. We're gonna go ahead and throw some fuel in this thing. Drop it back down to left. In the back, when we propped it up, it was just barely propped up. It didn't need to be propped up hardly at all. You know, it just needs to be propped up enough to get everything to flow to the front. Now, on a lot of these units, they will not drain that tank complete, completely. So please pay attention to that. If all that fuel, again, is not out of that tank, you're going to run right back into the same issue. It's always the water and the nasty stuff that gets left behind, it seems like. So... We're going to put, right now, we're putting ethanol-free fuel. Uh, we do treat it with Startron, or I'm sorry, we use Phaser 3000 now. We used to use Startron. It's just to combat the water. We did some testing, and Phaser 3000 seems to combat any kind of ethanol breakdown, any kind of water or anything like that real well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get this thing finished, fire it up. Looks like we got some sort of issue going on. All right. Looks like it's leaking straight out of the bottom of the unit. So it does look like as I was putting the carburetor back together, that O-ring on the bottom actually ripped. So just a tiny little corner of it ripped off. So you got to be careful when you're putting these things back together. Tiny little corner of it ripped off, causing the bottom bowl to leak. Not a huge deal. You know, we just went ahead and replaced the O-ring real quick. We've got uh, different ones laying around. But obviously if it's, uh, you know, a, a case where you do this out in the middle of nowhere and you don't have more parts laying around, it's going to cost you some time. So... I'm going to go ahead and fire this thing up now. We should have everything good to go. Go ahead and throw the fuel cap back on real quick. We'll see what this thing runs like. Now, normally when you're starting it up for the first time, this thing's probably going to smoke pretty good if I had to guess, depending on whether it was ran, you know, or not with all the stuff in it. But move this gas off the table. Make sure our unit is on. So the engine is running good now. We've got the issue all taken care of. 
no more leaking coming out of anywhere obviously you're going to get some good smoking coming from it you can just see that smoke kind of pouring off of it now one more thing you want to pay attention to is to your exhaust screen if it was ran with that mix in it whatsoever even with the slightest amount of overfilled with gas in it a lot of times your screen will actually carbon up to the point to where it will not run right or not run at all because of the blockage of the exhaust so check this screen if you can see straight through it hey that's great you know it's it's good to go but if there's a bunch of carbon buildup on it you're going to want to clean that screen that can be done pretty easily just by taking the four bolts out you take it off and all you have to do is burn that stuff off of there and you'll be all good to go so thanks for watching like and subscribe